TJ, when you're, when you're recruiting, how do you know somebody that you're recruiting is going to be someone that will go after loose balls with the relentless way that, that controlled relentless way that you want them to? You know, you look at um, more than anything, probably like their team success, uh, their ability, how they've handled adversity in the past, uh, the things they talk about in terms of being a teammate and how they work. Because I think <laughs> with our group, um, guys doing that is, you know, you can look at the track record of they've been hard workers, they've been winners, they've been guys who – um, care about the team's success, and, you know, they play with a lot of pride. And I, I, those are things that from what I've seen over time, you know, those guys, guys who have never done that, don't start doing it uh, in the Big 12 and in college at the highest level. And guys who have always done it don't stop doing it, you know, when they get here. So trying to be realistic in evaluating that track record before they get here. TJ, you guys are among the nation's leaders in in second chance opportunities, maybe like third in the country. Um, was Has that been a focus for you well, guys? And how much of a focus was it? We put a lot of <laughs> emphasis on, you know, being, being the best at effort-based things and certainly going to the offensive rebounds or getting second chance points falls in line with that. Um, the part where I'm proud of our guys is, you know, we played four guards a lot of times too. And, you know, I think what Taman's able to do on the offensive boards uh, and second chance points is, is, you know, phenomenal because, I mean, he keeps possessions alive. He finishes them. He gets guys shots. So he's a big part of that. Um, it certainly has been a point of emphasis. I mean, look for us, it's, it's the ball pressure to turn people over, which we've been okay there. It's the rebounding emphasis where we've been okay there. And, um, you know, the one area when we have been successful that we focus on is is value in the ball. And when we've had challenges, we haven't done as well. So, excuse me, um, I just say it has been a huge area emphasis, something we demand every day, it's something our guys take a lot of pride in. And we got a little, you know, the group, they call themselves the crash crew, which is all the guys uh, getting, to the, getting to the boards and getting us those second chance opportunities. One more thing from me, TJ. Are you sending four or five, or, or you're not sending five, are you? No, no, no. We're okay. You know, in, in our plan, you know, guys have a specific job, so it's it's Shun if he's in, and Rob if he's in, and you know, TK and Jazz, and you know, the guys who are at the four and the five, and then with Taman. So, um, okay, you know, we're we're pretty much in most cases, you know, two and a half or three guys are going, and then you know, we're we're also trying to be great in transition defense. Cool. Thanks, TJ. Thank you. Hey, TJ, thanks for the time. What has kind of stood out so far about, uh, you know, when you've watched Stevenson play specifically, you know, kind of creating space on the perimeter and creating for others a little bit the last couple of weeks as well? Yeah, he's he's playing great uh, lately, shooting it with a lot of confidence. He's highly aggressive. Um, you know, when his mentality is focused on being the best he can for his team, um, you know, they play at a really high level and they've certainly been doing that lately. They've had some big wins. So um, a guy that like most teams, you know, when it's the leading score or the most aggressive offensive player, or whatever that may be, you know, with, when things are going well for him, it usually means things will go well for other for others. So Workman, can you grab me a water? What we need to do is, um, you know, do a great job being intentional, not letting him be comfortable and not letting him, you know, get clean looks, open looks, or be uh, confident. Um, you know, we've got to always be disruptive and try to frustrate him. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry. <laughs> Good morning, TJ. Um, I wonder, as you talk to Jazz after his first 10-plus minutes in, in over a month, obviously broken finger, you wouldn't think would affect conditioning, but still it's not a game time situation a how is he feeling and and b how can you treat him as pretty much 100 percent full go from here on or you'd have to still manage it a little bit yeah I'd, I'd say you know in terms of the physical conditioning like you can do all the running and you know sliding and you know anything you want <laughs> riding a bike it's still different than 
even when you simulate basketball activity, the actual conditioning of when you add 15,000 fans and uh, the stress, the anxiety, the anxiety, the, the challenges that happen in a game, it's an entirely different animal. So uh, we're going to continue to, um, you know, do what's best for jazz. I, w- I would say he's not at a hundred percent. What I, I don't know that anybody's at a hundred percent when you get to this point in the year, but what I would say is we're going to continue to work with him to do the things that are best for him in practice. And then to make sure that, w- you know, however we handle his minutes, that we're very mindful of what's in his best interest to be at his very best when he's out there. Gotcha. Thanks, TJ. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, TJ, how are you? Good. How are you, Travis? I'm all right. What's uh, How dangerous is West Virginia when you look at their record? Just how misleading is that with how well they're playing the last I don't know, two weeks or so? Yeah, they're playing great. I mean, you know, again, just they've played a very challenging schedule. Um, so, you know, when you look at the losses, that's, that's certainly a part of it. Um, I'm not like a big metrics guy or look at a whole lot of numbers, but from what I've been told, it's, you know, they're in the top 20 in the NETs and Ken Palms and all those things. So regardless of what their record is, um, you know, it, it's, it, you know, the numbers say they're, they're like a top 20 team and more specifically, they're playing really well right now. So, you know, we've got to do a great job and they're a, t- a team that prides themselves on like being the aggressor and especially on their court um, where they overwhelm you. And so that they do that with ball pressure. They do it with rebounding. Um, you know, the areas where we want to be really good, that's where they try to be good in those things as well. So, um, you know, we've got to focus on doing what we can do and being who we can be. But uh, we know that, you know, we're going to have to play really well to be successful there and, and we're going to have to do what we can to make them not play as well um, by those same things. We spent a lot of last week talking about how you guys play on the road. Is that what kind of opportunity is this, or is that something you address with the group or not? Well, we talked about specifically in league play, you know, our last three road games, um, and we've had five Big 12 road games. I mean, we've won by, if I'm not mistaken, we've won by three, we've won by two, and we've lost by two, we've lost by two, and we've lost by three in overtime. So we've had five games. They've all been close. They've all come down to the last possession or two. And what we need to do, we talked to our guys about, is like we owe our habits to make sure that in those key moments, we're still pressuring the ball. We're getting a block out. We're commanding the offensive possession. And that's the, the most important time of the game. So for us – you know, there's got to be a, a stubborn, tough grit to say, all right, you know, these these last few games on the road, you know, a play this way, a play that way, we would have been able to be successful. And now we're going to go execute and do that and make sure that we're on, you know, the, the winning side of the ledger. With you guys playing pretty low possession games, you know, the, the big swings, the 16 points, the 23 points, does that give you, I don't know, confidence that those are probably more – maybe not as something endemic that maybe it's just, you get cold for eight or nine minutes and that it's not, you know, the way you guys play, I guess is not going to lend itself to that happening often. Yeah. I mean, for us, like we're, we're, we're at our absolute best is as possessions offensively wind down. We, um, you know, like we play for each other, five guys are involved. There's an option to post drive, cut, you know, uh, space, get an offensive rebound. When we've, had challenges it's been more because we get to that point in the clock and either it's somebody's pressure pushes us out or guys on our team feel like you know they need to go make a play to help our team individually so and that's where I think the possessions do get longer because we we want all five guys incorporated we want everybody to be a a factor we want you know we don't ever want anyone feeling like they're on an island so to your point (laughs) <laughs> I do think that creates the possibility for longer possessions because we'll, we're more willing to share the ball and make extra passes, which will get you later in possessions. And when we've been really good, we found a way to to score uh, later in possessions, however that may be. So I, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's not necessarily by design in terms of pace or tempo or, you know, clock management. It's more just about we're at our best when everyone's involved. Thank you.
You're welcome. TJ, hey. what, one more thing for me, and this is totally off West Virginia. Um, what's the Iowa, the Iowa State alumni, the success some of the guys are having in the NBA, what's that do for your recruiting? Well, it's, it's certainly great to see the honor Tyrese received, you know, last week and um, pretty cool to have a guy in the all-star game. And, you know, again, for so many guys here, it, it, it shows that, you know, you can come to Iowa state um, and most guys with the exception of Taman, they're certainly coming from somewhere else. Uh, and for most out of state or for some, even out of region, this place you can come to, uh, you can focus on uh, basketball, your development, um, and you can you can make whatever your dreams are reality by hard work and the things you do every day. And the guys that are having success at the next level uh, have done that because they've made that extra investment in terms of the work they've done. The guys that have had the most success here have done the same. And we take a lot of pride in being about the hard work and the player development piece. So having guys be successful validates the work that's done in our building every single day. Thank you, TJ. Thank you, sir. Any more brain busters? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, TJ. You too. Thank, Thank you. you.